abductions, car chases, shootings, butt plugs, and babies. We saw 50 Shades Freed, so you know what that means. We are live in our LA home here at the Largo Theater at the Coronet. Boy, oh boy, it is a night. The third part of the Fifty Shades trilogy. What's happening in the wonderful world of Anastasia and Christian Grey? Well, I'll tell you, not much. They're married. People are out to get them. They know immediately who it is. And every problem is solved quicker than when they say it. They say the problem, it is solved. It is like mini episodes of Entourage. It all builds to a very satisfying conclusion, and it does include a post credit scene. I hope you all watch that. Now, tonight, we are going to break it down. But first, please welcome my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas. What's up, jerks? How we doing, Largo? That's right. Night three. Paul, you just said about this movie that it all ends very satisfyingly, and I have to disagree. This movie's, this entire trip, I'm furious that this has happened to me. <laughs> These three nights have been a harrowing descent into, I don't even know, not sexy, unhorny hell. I that's, was what, eating, that's what hell is to me. I was eating a burrito and watching a scene of people fucking and being like... I folded laundry and washed dishes. Two people fucking in a, in a sex dungeon room, which should be something I... It should be a keyword search that I do at 2 o'clock in the morning. Now... We, I'm watching it broad daylight, and I'm like, oh, this soup really caked onto this pan. Now, what I will say I'm is I'm going this. harder at the pan than he's going at her. What is this? Here's what I will say. Was this a tough watch? Yes, it was. But when they get to that Fast and Furious montage... Oh, my God! At the end, I cried. And I was sad to let these people out of my lives. For three days, what? I've lived in their world. Did they? And even though nothing has happened, I wanted more. I feel like, th I feel like the events of the movies take place in three days. Oh, easily. Like, I feel like if you told me the entirety of them meeting to them at the end of the movie with Teddy, the <laughs> child's name is Teddy. Well, I mean, yes. I Maybe mean, it's two weeks. Well, maybe. Well, here's what I'll say. Including gestation and birth. She's got something that happened that, yeah, it goes very quickly. Here's what I'll say. We know from the second movie that she has a job for less than two weeks that she starts. So we know that that's a marker of time. Then she gets proposed to. It seems like she may have gotten married the day after she got proposed the days. to. Within days. days. They have a world spanning honeymoon yes right and that was last night or tonight no that's that, tonight that's tonight 
I'm, I'm so unwell. No, I, I, I am also now getting I'm, bored. I'm in a like fugue state. I spent so much time with these two people that I don't know if I'm in their life or they're that's in mine. What, that's what I felt like when this ended. I felt like, no, where will I do? I, this is like the Matrix, the worst version of the Matrix. I think I, think I might be, I, I, I might be a creation of E.L. James. You know what I'm afraid of? The insanity that's on screen is now normalized to me. That's what I think too. I think I've and I'm watched like, well, of so course, much. get his fuck jeans out, and then and I'm like, wait a minute, this movie. I gotta remember that these are fuck jeans. This, what, what are we doing? This movie ends with the gently, the light placing and smoothing out of fuck jeans. Like that is one of the final moments. Like, well, get his fuck jeans out, uh-huh. Uh-huh. honey. Time to fuck me. Like. It's a very weird, weird ending. I have thoughts on the ending. I have a lot of big thoughts, but tonight we have a very special guest. She is the host of her own podcast, which is fantastic. They talk about uh, celebrity autobiographies. They talk about reality TV. The podcast is called Glamorous Trash. Uh, She also has a book coming out called, I shouldn't be telling you this, you can pre-order right now. Please welcome Chelsea Devantes. Welcome. Welcome, Chelsea. Thank you. Thank also, you. Also, we're so sorry. I, I, I accept. I accept. Although I've just, I came so hard today. I'm so tired. <laughs> so tired for this podcast. I was hearing you talk about the timeline. Yes. I also want to point out that when he meets her, she's a college senior. Yes. So this woman is like 20 years old. But he's yeah. 27. <laughs> yes, yes. But <laughs> and <it's, laughs> he also turns 28 in movie two. In movie yes. two. Okay, okay, but that means like at the end when she has all these babies, 20 at most. 21. 21. You think? Maybe. I mean, what 22. she does, I mean, what she does, she, I mean, she is a fresh out of college student who within the course of three and a half weeks. Max. Um, She's in Has col- sex for the yeah. first time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gets out of a relationship, goes back into a relationship, gets her dream job. Gets almost raped at her dream job, gets her boss fired, takes over her boss's job, gets married to the person that she broke up with, and then is chased, kills somebody, or hurts them badly, and then has two babies. Two babies. (laughs) She also... (laughs) That's a lot. She also evades... Uh, um, the security detail that's been assigned to her takes five million dollars out of the bank <laughs> like it, it goes through like you said a fast and furious style car chase where apparently everybody in Seattle drives an Audi <laughs> <laughs> that's just what we're doing and and I was like at what point we've spent three movies now with Taylor and the security detail mm-hmm. and they are worthless <laughs> No, this is the one. They wor- do zero. Nothing. Nothing. They are so Justice bad. Justice for Taylor. They are so bad. The security detail in this movie is so bad that when they capture a person that is trying to abduct her in her own home, they're like, we don't have any handcuffs. Yeah. We, we don't know how to restrain this we person. We don't know what no, to do. No, zip ties. Our, our hands aren't enough to yeah. hold them. Yes. Owie. <laughs> both, both Anastasia Steele, again, a name I will never think is a real name it makes it only seem more like this is skinamax but both she and mia the sister are able to just effortlessly evade their security detail and that is chilling well i do want to i want to just check in with you chelsea because you know obviously we've watched all three just talk us through where you came in on the 50 shades world like did you read the book yes yeah, yeah. yeah so about 9 years ago i had a feeling i'd be on this show and i was like i should read this book <laughs> so i did i did i read the original book i, I did you guys read <laughs> i read I read pieces of it. You read pieces of it. Okay. I owned it. So I, like, I, I'm a writer. I but... support publishing. <laughs> Independent publishers. That's right. Yes. So I, we're, we're both writers and I read the book, but I'm not one of those writers who cares. I'm not like, oh, grammar or like, yeah, yeah. like I'm not like that. And that book, the sentence structure, the grammar, the commas was, was obscene to the point where I think E.L. James was like, every comma is a dick. <laughs> I think she, comma, 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 comma. Like I think she, she calls them commas. Commas. 
<laughs> Last show think... of the week, everybody. Last That's show. The That's, the That's, That's the shirt. That's the shirt. It's not going to get better. You're done. That's it. That's the yeah. peak for me. Well, she also calls, um, you know, when she's writing, she's like, he touched my down there. Yes. I'm like, wait, you're gonna how are we just finding this oh, out? Oh, no, well... My down there. No. no. Yes, and she also refers to herself as her inner goddess, right? Inner yes. goddess is a She's big like, Inner goddess I can kind of understand, but touching yeah. your down there is too much an immature, childish well, like, uh, way to talk about... It, exactly. Yeah. Also, but, you know, she's a, the other really important part of the mm. book. I don't know, this blows my mind. Um, she didn't have a laptop, Wait, do you remember not, this? No. So Anastasia's he in does, college. Oh, 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 I thought you meant E.L. James. Maybe. Oh. All right, she I, wrote it longhand. <laughs> By the way, that would make <laughs> sense. Like I went to the library, used their. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Anastasia, yeah. Anastasia Steele. She's like in college, yeah. and she's like, uh, and Christian Gray's like, here, you need a laptop. She's like, what? <laughs> in these movies, and, he's <laughs> constantly gifting her tech. A yeah, phone, a phone, of this, of yeah. that, yes. Yeah, but I'm worried about, I'm worried about her. I'm worried about E.L. James, honestly. Have we checked on her? Well, I mean, E.L. James, <laughs> like, I, I feel like it, we were talking about this last night. There is something very, like, it, like this movie is like, ooh, I like to walk on the wild side, which means breaking a man of the habits that he has, marrying him, and having kids. It's like, <laughs> it's, yes. like, it's, like it's like, it's yeah. like, it presents like ooh, but then it's also very. It's no, all it's super vanilla. Like, it's this be is our a... sexiest book, and she's like, "Be a husband and make I'm a mom now." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, "I'll have as many kids as you want." <laughs> it it seems as though, and because I did not process these books at all, and what I understood was that it was this incredibly sexual descent into this world of BDSM and all sorts of other kinks and so forth. And then it is so vanilla yeah. inside of it. There's like, there'll be handcuffs and then just missionary fucking. Yes. yes. There's I no, think in this there's world, no long languid teasing. There's no, there's not nothing. Well, the book, I have to say the books are a lot hotter and a lot dirtier than, which is sad <laughs> because they're fine. Yeah. Um, but in the movie... Should we do the books? <laughs> <laughs> How did this get written? <laughs> I, I, the scene that crushed me... The answer me is, is with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> I still got it. There was more than commas. Oh, this gas wow. left You're ready to go. He's ready to go. It's a Friday night. <laughs> do, do you remember the scene when he's like, you, you hung out with your friends. Oh, yeah. And that's not allowed. And I'm like, this is, again, what's hot to us, whatever. And he's like, so you're going to be punished. And then he pulls out a vibrator half the size of the microphone. And he's like, Bring. And she's like, it, no. It makes the same sound, the same sound as a lightsaber in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. And then he's just like, there's a slow shot of the vibrator. And then, and then they cut away from that. And then you just, he's just like. <laughs> no, what was so crazy about that scene, what was so crazy about that scene was, and again, we're, we've talked about sex a lot in these films, but that was to me the most graphic scene because it was like in between her underwear. It was what it was in. There. But it was so small. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Like what? This is Fifty Shades of Grey. You you only it, got the Walmart thumb vibrator you buy in secret when you're checking I out. I swear to God, it's the base of an electric toothbrush. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not even. A vibrator. It's the thing you grab to be like, I don't know, maybe this? Uh, <laughs> but he, yes. but what I love about that scene is like, and this is the thing, Christian Grey is like super redeemable at points and then goes right back to being a fucking asshole. The, like you're like, oh, so he's like, you, you find out in that scene, like he brought her into the red room to torture her for promising one thing and then doing the, another. And she's like, ho, ho. Red, red. She calls out her yeah, safe yeah. word. This is the first and only time she, she uses, uses red. Safe and word. it was, I just want to make it very clear. It's because he put the vibrator up to her three times and then pulled away. And she's like, red, red, red. Right. And she's it like, was... I almost came and then I did it, you monster. Yeah. That was as rough. That's as rough as it gets. Yeah. I, Almost I'm, coming. Yes. Blue balls. You're, yes. You're teasing me too much, Red. But then, no one wants to be teased during sex. But then, <gasps> you, but then you have this moment where she's like, I can't believe you did this. You used the Red Room to prove your point. And he's like, yeah. And she's like, okay, let's get back to the mystery. So who do you think is after us? And I was like, and as long as it's not, wow, Kim, as long as it's not Kim Basinger, because she's not in the movie, we no. can keep going. We set up a villain. <laughs> 
in the first two movies that is simply not there in the well, third. she's a text message. Yeah. Oh, right. One text she message. She sends a text message. I kept waiting for her to arrive. But and then this is... <clears throat> who do we get? HR Liz. <laughs> I was like, Liz from HR, what are you doing here? Well, this is the craziest thing. This movie she's is- here to conduct an exit interview. <laughs> This movie is constantly setting up villains and premises that they don't pay. It's like they set up this whole thing that Anastasia's friend Kate, I have a lot to say about Kate, is nervous. Oh, also, thank that God her, Kate got engaged. Well, but, I, but by the way, Kate gets engaged. It's like, I think my boyfriend's cheating on me. Then they set up Anastasia seeing like this person touching his face and then he proposes to her and it's like, who was he? Yeah, and then she's like, he's like, I asked my ex to help me pick out the ring. So was and she's arc- like, okay, and then that's it. It's Gonzo. And <laughs> boy, I hope someday I am in love and I have a relationship and I can get down on one knee in the middle of a crowded Aspen nightclub <laughs> and in front of strangers and some family and friends propose to that lucky gal <laughs> and then dance the night away. It is bonkers. Now, Kate, I will... S- Kate should say no. Yeah, but... And, and we never know what happened with her. And wait, just real quick. The movie Please. begins at their wedding. And th- again, this Ooh. whole thing was written for women. Women are the demo. The wedding's hideous. I was like, you had one job. But... <laughs> Give us a nice wedding. No, no, no the wedding. wedding. And they want to get out of the wedding so quick. It's like they don't give you any pomp and circumstance. Like they don't even. It's out. not even a scene. No it's a cake montage. cutting. It's, it's like the opening credits. Although I did see that Jose is working the wedding. Jose is her <laughs> photographer friend who took a lot of like oh, uh, photos nice. of her in the second one. Okay. And at one point, Jose is running around with the camera. He's like, "You hired Jose. Your buddy shouldn't be taking the pictures." Let Jose that, enjoy the party. That's not. I'm glad he was there. Her, Kate is in a, a really ugly dress. I was like, that's rude yeah. of you. Um, but they only had two days to get their outfits. <laughs> you're right. You're right. <laughs> but did you notice that the wedding ended at a what appeared to be 11 a.m.? Yeah, it was early. <laughs> it was. Oh yeah. Sun like sun was like at its peak, when and they, they were get like to the, <laughs> running they get out. To the airplane. They've already changed. And it's not even noon. Like, no. you know, they're, they're gone. It's so interesting. Like, the scale and scope in the second movie, there's a sexy, no, a not sexy masquerade okay. ball with hundreds of extras and massive set piece and blah, blah, blah. The wedding should have had that kind of feel. Yeah. And it, there isn't anything. This movie takes place in small rooms with just a handful of, I almost feel like this is like an indie film version <laughs> Yeah, a movie. I thought at a certain point the way they started filming it, like that we're, we were never going to see people. I'm like, oh, they're getting married by themselves. But then when they escape the wedding, like, get get the fuck out of here! I don't want to share you with these people, <laughs> our our loved Again. ones who you are not allowed to see anymore. Yeah, or I'll fuck you in the red room. It's so bizarre, <laughs> clumsily and, and boringly. <laughs> yeah. These people are bad at sex. Period. Very bad. I did appreciate that this movie takes the bold choice to have her start going down on him because he all he does his movie is just like I'm going down like he's always starting at the bottom covered and working his way up ice cream Ugh. covered in ice cream you are gonna smell like bad milk tomorrow can, you're gonna you're spoiling as we speak can Ugh. I tell you my my I was watching the movie uh, also folding laundry weird my husband came in and he was like oh my God, so there's like cum all over her leg? And I was like, no, it's a product placement for Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> yeah, ben, way, and Jerry's. ben and Jerry's was in the last movie yeah, too. Yeah. Well, and he just, he just puts some, some on her leg and like eats it and she came from it. And I was like. She's always coming. She's, she comes a lot. I do like that for her. <laughs> but this oh, is what, yeah. I, what, what I like about her is like, that's her attitude is someone's always coming because she like, even when they pull up to a plane, she's like, you own this? That's what she says in every movie. Yeah, yeah. You have this. She's always surprised. Have they never spoken? Like they just they, you know what they, they have literally have never had a conversation. They don't have real conversations. We know Except the Bachelor. We know this. Yeah, because they are already married and have not had a conversation about whether they want children or not. Yes. <laughs> Which I she was like, you want kids, right? Husband? Wait, how did that not come up? Oh, and he's like, no! I hate children. <laughs> How could you do this to me? She's and like, I'm pregnant. Yeah. That pregnancy scene, when she reveals that, he gets so 
mad. It's very dark. And and it's and what I love about this movie is that like those are the moments where they go there where it's like, I don't want kids because kids are gonna take you away from Ooh. me. Yeah. I was like, oof. That's a, a tough thought to again, like sit with. It, again, those things make me feel like both of these people have the emotional intelligence of like 16 year olds. Yes. Yeah. They yes. are children, even though they're adults. They no, they're two people under. No, she's a child they still. They're <laughs> acting like children. Yes. They're two people under 30. They barely got their shit figured out. I yeah. mean, I like. So if you're under 30, go fuck yourself, <laughs> says Paul Shear. <laughs> All I'm saying is this. You don't want to be held accountable for the decisions you make before 25. No, no. That's a terrible place to be. Oh, you shouldn't be allowed to get married under 30. Yeah. I like that as a rule. And if you're over 50, it's cool. You can still get married someday. (laughs) My favorite scene that's not in the movie, but I wanted to see, is like they go to France. They're having this beautiful, you know, French honeymoon. And at one point, they go, like, does he have to be with us? And they cut to Taylor, the bodyguard. Taylor getting a little bit Here's more... Here's the update. No. Yeah. He's <laughs> fucking useless. But what I loved about Taylor was, like, at one point, they, he's like, let's go back to the boat. And then they get on jet skis, and they jet ski off. And I'm like, just thinking, I wanted the camera to pan over and just see, like, Taylor on his own little jet ski, like... Mm. Like, because <laughs> he's got to get back to the boat, too. <laughs> in the <laughs> scene? In the scene where... Um, where they're racing Audis, where um, where it becomes they, fast and furious when they when they drive away from the new house and 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 Christian is like you drive because you know? she she told that architect to go fuck herself. Yeah. Can we Incredible. play that scene? Can we play the whole scene? Yeah, Great. The, the, yeah, the architect- and then I'll, I'll I'll say my dumb bit okay, afterwards. This this architect scene is one of my favorite uh, things. All right, so this it, is again. She was. A demure Mormon virgin, I believe, eight days prior to this. Yes, yes. She's becoming as evil as Christian Grey in this oh, scene. She has surpassed. Please stop speaking to my husband as if I weren't here. Anna. <laughs> I have designed many prestige projects. You may call me Mrs. Grey. And this is not a prestige project. This is going to be our home. So, if you want this job... I suggest you stop making eyes at my husband and keep your hands to yourself. Or you can go and climb back into your shit-colored car and drive back to snow. It's up to you. Look, I'm sorry, Mrs. Gray, but I would never... It won't happen again. Everything okay? Yeah. I don't even we understand that term. We're discussing an alternative approach. Like, what is that term? Like, what is that term where she's like, oh, oh. <laughs> like, why? Why is she going all demure in that moment? Oh, uh, that woman. That woman's acting is in the same movie as Marsha Gay Harden. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking the, the the movie's insults are so ridiculous. Shit colored car. Color That's actually car. her best line of dialogue. Oh, hundred percent of it. Is. Uh, this yeah. is the, by the way, they have more chemistry than Anastasia and Christian Grey. <laughs> All I want is to watch them kiss. Yes, that, yes. That was hot. That's that's but, red hot, that scene. But I will say this. It was confusing because when she popped on screen, I was like, wait a second. Is that Kate? Because which blonde is who? <laughs> this is a movie where these are three different characters. <laughs> what, is, what is so crazy is that one of them is Rita Ora. Yes, yes. <laughs> Like, how did you make Rita Ora look like Kate? Oh, no. I'm fine. Were you coming? Yeah, I just came. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this... You said Rita Ora, and I was like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, go, go, go. I, I mean, it, like, if you take a Rita Ora out of the equation, like, just keep the two. I was, conf- I wa- I was confused. It's I was like, con- it is consistently confused. Yes. 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 Um, because they're all intermixed and around. And also, um, Casey Dutton, um, uh, the brother. What's yeah. his name? I can't remember his name. He's Casey Dutton Jack? of Yellowstone. Elliot. Elliot, okay. Elliot is is enga- gets engaged to Kate during this, but we then see him on the street talking to the architect, which which I oh, thought was that like was maybe, the architect. That was yes. the architect. So, what? Yes, that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, why is the architect there? And then I'm like, is their he, world is, is he, so small. I thought he was as confused as I am. And he's like, oh, that's my girlfriend. And he's like, <laughs> no, oh, that's my ex girlfriend. That's what she should have said when Kate is like, I don't know, he might be cheating on me with the architect. She should have been like, oh, he probably thinks the architect is you. 
Okay, but then that ar- that means the architect is like, I'll fuck you, I'll fuck you. I'll f-. Like, the architect but, is fucking brothers? <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand what the architect wanted from anything, really. She wanted to make a nice home. Yeah. <laughs> prestige. A prestige project. And, you so know, architects, leave- the one thing that architects love is taking down a house with a lot of character yeah. and just <laughs> making it, like, into a A steel- modern yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> when they leave the house with that, after that scene, they leave the house and he's like, yeah, you handled her so well. Why don't you drive us home or whatever? Yeah. And then she peels out and she's driving fast and furious style. So Anastasia Steele is able to shake the tail that is Taylor and the security detail. But somehow HR Liz <laughs> is unshakable. <laughs> this is a woman who's driving her personal car. And he is, again, the head of HR for a publishing house. And she is better at tailing them all over the city from but, the woods to downtown. But my question is and this. And the security team is like, we lost her. We lost you. We don't know where we are. I think we're in Canada. Uh-oh, boss. It's fucking Keystone Cops over here. Well, this is where the movie makes no sense because they're being tailed. <laughs> but to what end? Like, For they what, just yeah. go back and forth to home and some other... Let's, they're oh, going to yeah. be home in a little also, bit. Also, like, the, the guy in the end who's going to hold her up for... Not the money, so I don't know what. Yeah. He's not out of jail yet. So Liz is just... Tailing her to keep tabs on her for him? But like, they know that she, she they always him? go home. I, they I always agree. go home. I, guys, I didn't make the movie. <laughs> okay. Don't be <laughs> mad at me. The other thing about... This is the crazy, because again, that thrillers are based in the idea that like, who could it be? There's a mystery. <laughs> On the first day of their honeymoon, they're like, Mr. Gray, there's a server fire. And here's the footage. And then immediately Anastasia's like, oh, that's my old boss. Yeah. <laughs> like, how no, are they Immediately, not- and they're like, oh yeah, it is. How they are know they not on is. this? How they are know. they not on this guy? This guy has been a creep since the last movie. The movie, it, it's as if they said in the first movie, you know what, this movie needs villains. So in movie two, they're like, here's four villains. And then in this movie, they're like, JK, just one villain. Oh, oh, but a secret villain is now revealed, which is H.R. Liz. Somebody who's, I think, been an ally this whole time. But also, it doesn't make sense because they don't reveal what the... They capture and kill the villain. And then it's like an epilogue. It's like, you know why he was doing that? And it's like, oh, it was like, and there's a the credits. It's like, they, they, oh, okay, they, so, so I thought maybe you, because I, I didn't watch movie number yeah, yeah, no, two, because no, no, yeah, I don't hate myself. Yeah. Um, they go down so very I thought, smooth. I thought maybe I missed something where I was, no. no. They never reveal so, it. But, Th- that so la- he's like, I, he, he knows that guy? So at the, at like maybe 15 minutes in or some, something happened and I was like, Oh, wait a minute. Is And I called it in a way that I think is a... Pun- I'm punching it up into a better movie because Christian Grey for, it doesn't remember so much of his young life. I thought Jack was going to be revealed to be his brother. His brother... I, yes. I thought he was his brother till this moment. Yeah. Boy. Right. So he's not... It would be a better no. movie. They shared a foster home for a brief and, period of time. And then basically someone came to adopt like he's Marcia mad. Gay Harden came and he, adopted Christian Grey, and not. he's mad that like they picked him over him, which is like almost like a like a like a puppy litter. What's like it's so, like it's like what but, makes that so 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 insane? Because wasn't that in Detroit? Yes, that's in Detroit. Okay, Anastasia Steele gets a job at SIP, the publishing house in Seattle. Jack is her boss. It does has no connection yet to Christian Grey. Christian Grey then buys the publishing company. So for this dude, Jack, all of a sudden... His foster brother comes and buys his publishing house. Yes. <laughs> yes. The coincidence. Well, Your but, that's only, but is- that's only later. Like, I would say this. His long play is this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to become a, a famous publisher. <laughs> I got that. And then I'm going to wait to... Like, because for all of this to work... It doesn't... No, no. Did. It has to occur to him only when he realizes that his assistant is dating his ex-rival. Oh, I, you see, I thought the plan was longer. Like, I, like I, I thought he was like, I know his type. And eventually, wow. he'll find her. If I'm in the right position to hire her, then I'll get her. Because he's got a long plan. Because even for her to get that interview, to get there, like, there's no... like. 
And then he's at the party. There's so many ways also, of him, yeah. I know his type. A girl with medium brown hair. Kind of normal. Well, here's the here's the He'll wild, never be able to resist this person. Here's the wild reveal in the second movie. The wild reveal in the second movie is that all of the women that Christian Grey, he's he has had 15 women in the red room and that all of them look like his dead mother. <laughs> including Anastasia Steele. He's working some sort of some sort of Oedipal mediocre thing brunette fuckhouse. Yes. <laughs> but, and again, and I'll bring this up in every episode, he is also dealing with trauma because he was raped by Kim Basinger when he was 15. That's right. So okay. he's also... While she was, quote, unquote, teaching him how to fuck. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Because I was going to say, rape feels like a word that you, you've chosen. Yes, and the they book don't was ever... like, it was hot. Yeah, they, they, yeah. <laughs> they never say it. But people are like, that it's is... It's true. It is. It's definitively like, mm, rape. Oh, yeah. 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 No, he was no 15 it, years old. She's a pedophile. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but, but she's also his good friend, and he doesn't see any problem with it. Not at all. And he's still and, in contact. As so, a matter of fact, in a time of need, he's like, well, I should go talk to that person. And he doesn't think his wife should have any problem with it. I told you. Every, she's just a friend. We're just friends. I'm just friends with my former pedophile rapist. And Get yes, over it. Both, I own her blow dry bar, but that's not a big deal. She's both very of them talented. Are a good so, investment. <laughs> both of them are so jealous, childishly jealous. Yeah. Yeah. Like about the about casual experiences that or his isn't so casual, but they're so like fly off the handle jealous. Oh yeah. In a way that I'm like, again, it's they are so they're just they're just children. So that they are so immature, so that then when it is them fucking, I'm like, I don't want to. Maybe we shouldn't. Wait, oh, I, I have a, it's too earnest. It's too something. Yeah. Yeah, I have another question. Okay, so Mia is his sister though, right? Adopted sister. He is adopted. What? He's but, adopted. Right, so but then his, she came from the foster home? No. So then that I think brother... Mia, I think Mia, <laughs> I think Casey Dutton, uh, uh, Elliot. Yeah. Uh, Mia and Elliot, I assume, are the biological... Although it's never been answered. Maybe all the kids are adopted. Who knows? Yeah. They're all adopted. They're oh. all adopted. Okay. And she's from a different... Right. I also... I really love the theme in this movie. Thank you. <laughs> They're all adopted. Someone's on it. I also really love the theme in this movie where they're like, and why is everyone bad and gross? They were adopted. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the, the most damning line in this movie, and I wrote it down because it was like, it really bummed me out because there's a moment where it's revealed that Jack, <laughs> Jack is mad that that family picked Christian instead of him. Okay. Right? And yeah. she was like, I know you, and you would never be a psychopath like this guy. And it's like, so she's basically saying, like, he, like his... Right, it's nature me, nurture. Yeah, sorry, I'm not saying e. it the right James way. James isn't interested in interrogating any of what you're talking about. Right. She's interested in butt plugs. Right, <laughs> right. Well, that's just like... Full the stop. Mo the movie, the movie one sets up, like, you'll never put anything in my butt, and movie three is like, I'm okay with it. No, movie that's one is, movie one is you'll arc. never put anything in my butt, and movie three is like, ooh. <laughs> but I it's guess... Like, I guess, I, guess what I'm, I guess what I'm just dealing with at the, at the end is like there's no sympathy for this guy being angry or like, yeah, like Christian Grey got brought into an insane life and I could see the jealousy and she's like no he would always have been a fucking psychopath but Christian Grey is also kind a of psychopath. a fucking psychopath like they both aren't well people they cut out a scene where Christian Grey starts beating everybody up in that Aspen bar like that's in the movie it's like He's not well. He's not. No, he's not a well She's man. Like, he's not as good as you. It's like, he, you ain't that good, when, buddy. When, <laughs> she, when the scene opens and uh, it, we then, we later find out she is with her gynecologist, I, for the first five or six seconds or whatever, was like, thank God she's seeing a therapist. Yes, me too. <laughs> Finally, these maniacs have decided to enlist a mental health professional. And instead, the woman's like, you're pregnant. But it also... <laughs> what? Immediately. They what, immediately get pregnant. What do you think is more unbelievable? The, the pregnancy, HR Liz, Taylor, the whole mystery, or that she sold at her new job <laughs> 200,000 books 200. in one week. Of purgatory? Of the novel Purgatory? Of the novel, they come and they say, you sold 200,000 copies. Now, 200, I, I yeah. just want to clarify, like, 
I used to think like, oh yeah, if you're a bestseller, hundreds of thousands. That's not even the act. The actual cover looks even worse. This is the this is just galleys. The actual cover <laughs> looks like like a VHS Stephen King box. There's no 200,000 people want that book, period. But it's, again, it's E.L. James going like, me. It's her sexual my, fantasy. Yeah, it's her fantasy. Her sexual fantasy is like she's at a publishing house and she sells 200,000 yeah. books. When, when um, she sold 200,000 books, it's like, get the fuck out of here. And it's, I think As it's, the two people that are trying to sell books right now, that's a fucking well, giant yeah, I, I, number. It's also an E.L. James fantasy because Boyce Fox... <laughs> was initially like poo-pooed as somebody who wouldn't sell books, wouldn't that, move units. Right. And she was like, he has a big online presence. The online- It's her. People, it's her. This is ELJ. She's right. I, Boyce Fox. Wait, is it an anagram? <laughs> Have you guys talked about the casting of Christian Grey at all? We talked that it was the guy from Sons of Anarchy, but that's all we kind of knew. It was okay. initially Charlie Hunnam. Was cast as Christian Grey. Oh wow! That's and I, I can't remember. I think they might have shot a little bit with well, him or something. Well, he said that he, he had a forty-eight hour turnaround from the last day of shooting Sons of Anarchy to this character. He said he couldn't transform in forty-eight hours. He needed more time. Jamie Dornan had only five weeks to get in shape, so he's not very happy with his body in the first one. So you notice in the second two, his body's a lot better because he's very happy. Unbelievable. With it. Well, yeah. I I wait, if you read the book, the literature, sure. yeah, um, from the page. So, oh yeah. Christian Grey is like a massive man. He's like six foot five. Oh, he's like, like Jack he's Reacher. Reacher. Yeah, he's Jack Reacher. But it's <laughs> now, now I'm, I'm in. interested. I'm in. Now I'm interested. Yeah. He's Reacher, and when the cops show up, it's Bosch. <laughs> yes. I just, I just want to, I just want to back to being a yeah, real sorry. big man. Yeah. I just want to know how was this not Army Hammer, and had right. it been, would he have survived the cancellation? No, I, I, I was... didn't say he's a great guy. No, I but you're said making, fucking yeah. so years sorry. ago, before we knew he ate people, why didn't they cast him? Can then you... they would be like, oh, he eats people, and we'd be like, we know, we saw Fifty Shades. Yeah. Can you guys not even hear Army Hammer's name? They're just saying the name, people are like, oh! Like, that girl no. thinks he should eat ladies! Oh, no! But yet this guy we like. But this boy, guy was like... Boy, oh boy, like Army Hammer, like, that, that's a horny movie. Well, that's but, a movie that gets it right, Call Me By Your Name. Yeah. That's a movie that fucking, that's what I'm talking about. I'm just saying pre, pre what we knew about Army pre, Hammer. Yeah. I just want to know why he wasn't on the casting doc. And by the way, if he was in these movies and then that stuff came out about him, people would have been like, of course, we've seen yes. him in the Red Room. Or, yes. or they would, like, I think what you're saying is we would have accepted it. We would have been we like. We would, it would have been like so ironic that the, I'm not arguing for him. I'm glad he's like in the Bahamas, like dying or whatever's was happening. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying thing. there's an alternate world <laughs> and uh and Flaney, let's not have army hammer come out for the surprise guest okay <laughs> um so the uh, i do want to play army hammer it's navy screwdriver anyway hey. guys he hear me out that is like my i had a, i had Black a it out. that's the show everybody thank you very much I had a friend in high school whose name was uh, Dan Gross, and everyone would go, uh, Dan Gross? He goes, it's not gross. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's a great bit. Four years, couldn't get tired of that bit. <laughs> um, when you were saying, what's the most ridiculous thing? Yes, selling 200,000 books is ridiculous, but I argue that this scene is the most ridiculous scene. Am, am I in the right office? You had a makeover. Mr. Roach wanted to welcome the new fiction editor. Who's the new fiction editor? You are. You got a promotion. I got a promotion? And you weren't even here. Anna! Hi, Hannah. <laughs> hey. Hi. How do you like the new digs? Amazing. I'm going to let you get settled in. And Anna, good luck. Not that you need it. Who is that beautiful man? Oh, that's Sawyer, my personal security. Um, can we find a spot for him? I might have an opening. Hannah! By the way, that, that single line from Hannah, if you've got an Anna in the movie, don't have a Hannah. That, that single line and its delivery should be the tone of the whole movie yes! series. Yes! 
Hannah gets it. <laughs> but I but this scene, but this scene I might have an opening. Yeah. I have a couple things. Quick, that I, sharp, funny, sexy. No. Like, great. None of these characters can show any of those signs. Sawyer, Every, hotter than Jamie Dornan. Yes. All, all the leads are like, eh. I thought that that guy was Sam Agar. Uh, the, the guy who, uh, well, I won't say. Britney Spears has Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sam Ashigari? Yeah, that's what I got. You thought that's who that was? I you, thought it was for a second. Yeah. Oh, you thought it was actually him? Oh, yeah. I thought you meant it looked like him. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I get well, it. Here, What's here's crazy what I, about uh, Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey is that they walk through a world, Seattle, the most vibrant city in America. <laughs> they walk through a world that everywhere they are, whoever is there desires them to the point of self-destruction. <laughs> and they the, show nothing that would make you feel like this is inter- like it's not like you know. Sometimes you go to a party or you go to have a dinner. And you're like, I want to know more. I want to hang out with this person. They show nothing that shows you anything of interest. Like, yeah. I am more interested in Hannah, who seemed to be a contemporary of Anna, and now is well, her. Well, they were assistants uh, did, together. Did, did okay. We ever see Hannah again? Never again. No. We because have I seen was, her before. I, you played that. And I said. I don't even remember her. No, they kind of get in and out of characters in this thing real quick. They don't have enough time. You, you, she is, I believe, the only person of color in the she, entire, entire trilogy. Yes. She should have been at the wedding. Which is shocking. <laughs> yes. She was too busy working. I mean, this... Hopefully the, she's fucking Sawyer. <laughs> this is my issue, though. This fucking scene is like my son has written the story. It's like, now you're the president. I am? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> Yesterday. And you already... Uh, everyone eats free cake all right great let's do it more cake more cake says the president and, and then gets that- on an eagle and flies away it's like- and i love that when they're proofing per or they're not proofing it when their conversation where they're like we sold two hundred thousand copies or whatever jo saunders like you did it ha huh? and then she's like you know what though make the font two points bigger that's right like she's just Up the font. tossing that off like uh publishing <laughs> specifics make the font bigger how small is that font my favorite moment in it is that she goes, hey, we didn't change your email. You know, we want to change it to Anastasia uh, Gray. And she's like, no, I'll keep it as Anastasia Steele. Okay, cool. And then beat, beat, beat. What the fuck? <laughs> you don't have an email? I'm like, how did he find <laughs> He said, I even sent you an back? email and it bounced back. Immediately. But, but that means he guessed. He was like, I'm going to send my yeah. wife an email. I'm not going to use the phone. I'm not going to text how it's we normally do. Guess. I haven't sent I'm my wife guess. an email in Chelsea, years. I believe it's not a guess. It's a test. Okay, well, that would give the movie a lot of credit. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's like, she started work 30 minutes ago. Yeah. Let me type in Anastasia Gray. It better at- fucking go through. <laughs> he hasn't even, even if she did change it, it might have bounced back. She just got the job. She just got the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! And by At, the way, what a bold move to be like. Has that ever happened in real life? Someone decorates your office without any input, from and them? gives you a promotion without you knowing, and sends the bitchy lady to tell you. None so of this made movie happens. None of what happens in any of these movies happens in real life. Uh, we you made, you made your office uh, okay. a nautical on theme. On a car chase through the s- streets of Seattle, I, I believe to Jamiroquai. <laughs> And then you get into a parking garage and fuck like it's David Cronenberg's Crash. <laughs> a movie I desperately wish I'd seen instead, which is so much hornier than this movie. This movie, anytime there's stress, anytime there's happiness, anytime there's any emotion, fucking is just, like, that's the go-to. And I feel like that may have taken away some plot points or some drama, right? Like, I think you need people to talk about things at a certain point. Like, yeah, yeah. They don't seem interested in interrogating any personal anything. All right, let's go to you. Your name? Alyssa. Alyssa, what's your question? Okay, so if Jack Hyde can break into, like, Christian Gray's office building, which has, I'm guessing, a top-notch security system because he's the most tech guy ever. and he can- Is he? <laughs> he owns a blow-dry bar, and we know that, and a publishing house. Oh. Uh- those also, are the two. And energy. Those are, yeah. And, and, he, and, and energy he, stuff. And he flies a bunch of different helicopters. We did, And one time he was working on a MacBook that seemed to be off. Also, okay. as a security guy, his text messages show up on his screen, no passcode. Yes. yes. This is something to think about. Okay. But go, yes. But for the purpose of this question. 
right, right. He's complicated. But my question is, why, if he can, like, design a bomb and trick these securities and, like, break into high whatever places, why the fuck is he a publishing editor? Why not become a master spy? Where did he get all these skills? He's able to dupe a key card. He has the hacking equipment to set a bomb in the server room. He, Jack, by the way... I want to watch a movie about Jack is the most yeah. interesting character in this trilogy. Jack, full stop. Justice for Jack. Well, justice here's... for Jack. I don't care about these rich fucks. Yeah. But here's my question about Jack. Jack already did the most insane thing, which was plant a bomb on Christian's helicopter, which they just kind of say in the past. He's like, oh, by the way, they did tell me it was um, a bomb on there. Anyway, uh, like... So oh, the movie only exists because withholding information is integral to their relationship. <laughs> but I mean, so he, but when he goes to the server room, I didn't understand why stop there. Like what, like it just seemed like he just upset the servers. It didn't seem like anything. No, I think it was so he could steal files without being. Files without for, it being, for but that, of what? Of what? Good books to publish. Yeah, I don't, that I don't know. But yeah, because it's like, not like I was expecting. I was expecting him to go, like, like in the paper, we would see all those NDAs that he's made these women sign that we've set up, and then it gets, like, released. Oh, he's, like, this guy. This Something BDM. he could blackmail them with. So, like, he's uh, a blackmailer in the, in the, yeah. in the story right. we find out and so forth. But yeah. nothing. Nothing seems to come well, of it. Well, the movie isn't interested oh. in building any plot. I'm sure it's in the books, and someone will correct us and tell us exactly why. But the movies aren't interested in building out the thriller element of it. They just want to have a couple of thrilling set pieces. Right. They don't want to actually be like, here's the why of it's this. It's every element in a thriller without any of the payoff or setup. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, ooh, we need a car chase. Ooh, yeah, someone should get shot. Wait, oh, and I... maybe uh, the twist. Oh, yeah, it's the HR person. Ooh, we ooh, never would have thought now, that. Now, hang on a second. I feel like maybe we should have a scene where we see Jack and understand what his motivation is. No, sorry. Just a scene where Christian Grey plays Baby I'm Amazed. Yeah, the piano, we're gonna, yeah. We're going to put that in instead of the plot stuff. Just because sexy. <laughs> but I also, thought... that was pretty hot. <laughs> that was the yeah, he's playing the piano. He's like, baby, I'm amazed. I was like, yes. Yeah. Like, yes. Also, yes, play piano on my pussy. If it... <laughs> I can't top can... that. Tickle the ivory. That was the most action. Him doing the piano. I was like, oh, maybe he can fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't no. know. Yes, your name, your question. Hi. Hi, Alyssa. Just for the audience, ladies, you announce your pregnancy. Granted, you forgot to take your birth control, but your man leaves, gets drunk with his pedophile rapist, comes home hammered, hits on you, and we're going to forgive him and just keep on trucking on? We're not going to talk about this? We're not going to talk about this. They never talk about anything. Well, I, I, I'm surprised. Like that, that definitely felt like they needed to go on another glider ride because whenever they do anything that is like that upsetting, they need to go up in the air. They need to go on another helicopter. If only, if only couples therapy existed in the world of these movies. Yeah. Well, also she gets mad. She's like, "How dare you go be with Elaine or whatever, Kim Basinger, right?" Yeah. And then she gets kicked, and she's in the hospital. And she wakes up, and he's like, "I want to marry you," and she's like, "That's tight. We're done here." And I was like, "So you were that? Was that only the only thing you wanted? You were never mad at Elena. You just wanted him to marry, but he already married you." And then, like, do you know what I mean? She's like, yes. I well, the scene, the scene that is to me one of the most insane is the scene in the closet where she's getting dressed. She's in her yeah. underwear. She puts oh, on yeah. all That's of her right. undergarments, then her boots. <laughs> while while they, this is the. I felt like they did that because this was the only scene in which they were talking about their interior emotional states. Right. And E.L. James must have been like, this, this is boring. Uh, so <laughs> during this, she's getting dressed, but never puts on enough clothes. So she <laughs> And now just, she can't put pants on. Her shoes on, are on. She just puts on underwear and then, I guess, boots to fill up the rest of the time? And that's the scene, and it's insane. I, I mean, that. I also will say that one of the saddest things I saw in this movie was her 
storming out of the bedroom and then taking a blanket into the playroom <laughs> and sleeping on like one of those fuck couches. In the red like, room? Yeah. yeah. Then we know they have a guest bedroom. That was established in the first movie. They have 10 sleep. guest bedrooms. Oh, yeah. I got to go to the guest bedroom. Why you don't did have to sleep on the fuck to couch. go to the red room? It also seems like the red room would remind you of things that you don't want to be reminded of. This is a movie, or a, a series of stories that are not interested in real growth in any meaningful way. Yeah, Christian It's Grey's all about, changed. like, don't look in that closet. Don't look in that room. It's fine. Yeah. Like, both mentally yeah. and... Re- but, you know, I'd be okay with that if they're like, we're not going to do any real growth because, again, it's a, it's a sexy movie. The demo oh. is women. Go ahead. No, please go ahead. Okay, well, I just, this is an important point to me and I just, to, to everyone out here. It's four women, okay? Sexy, sexy movie. Four women by women. Four women by L. E. L. James. Four women by woman. By woman. By w- woman. We see Dakota Johnson's boobs a million times. No dick. No. No dick. In the, I will say, in the. We riot tonight. <laughs> in the first movie, you see like almost the the top of his. The dick, little V. Like the dick neck. Eaten. <laughs> You know, you see just the neck where it connects to the to well, the pelvis. Well, yeah, I yeah. think that this is the issue, truthfully. Um, basically, when uh, CGI, when somebody when, just said CGI, put okay, the dick in. Sure, yeah, put, put the dick in. Put the dick in. Let's get in the volume. Let's put dicks in this thing. Jamie Dornan, when they were shooting the first movie, said. I will not do full frontal. And that caused a lot of uproar with the fans. Yeah. And I have a feeling that when, when Charlie Hunnam dropped out, they probably had a hard time finding a guy to do full frontal. And I so will Jamie- say, when Charlie Hunnam dropped out, I connected with the producers and said, I will show my dick <laughs> in this movie. Yeah. And they were like, please, no. <laughs> We're not interested. Here's my question. Paul, if you don't mind, and I know that sometimes you ask the uh, question askers to provide a this or a that. I would like for the people to suggest an actual movie that is horny for them. Oh, A la Nine and a Half Weeks or Angel Heart or whatever is a set. Angel Heart? But can I just say right now, Saltburn, the last three minutes, a full dick dance. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's just like... Oh, yeah. Murder on the dance floor. Murder on the dance floor. More than Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, yeah. My favorite thing about Saltburn is that uh, Barry Keoghan said, like, there's that scene at the gravesite, and he goes, yeah, I, that wasn't in the script. I just, I said I had an idea, and I wanted to do this. And, and, like, and want, no one knew. I wanted to fuck the grave. <laughs> I like or that. if you don't want to say what movie you think is sexy, you can also no, say... No, say it. You can also talk about your favorite part of Saltburn. Okay. <laughs> All, right, All right, fair. All right, fair. Here we go. Um, hi, what's your name? David. David, what's the movie that you think is sexy? Uh, two Moon Junction. I was going to say Two Moon Junction. Home Run yeah. Movie. Yeah. All right, so uh, what's your I've question? I've never heard of this. i got to run. Sh- is it Sherilyn <laughs> Fenn? Sherilyn Fenn. Sherilyn Fenn. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so I um, watch with the captions on, like Jason says to do, and I notice that all the By music. By the way, cues, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, thank you I for your the service. Music, <laughs> the music is always like just describing literally what they're yes, doing. Yes, like I we're that gonna too. go up, 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 and they like get on a plane. <laughs> and so um, at the end, uh, there the guy, the music says, "I can't think straight," and then he says, "You're topping from the bottom, Mrs. Gray," <laughs> which. Uh, topping and bottoming in the gay world means something very specific, which they are not doing. So I was, I was wondering, what, what do you think topping from the bottom means? I feel like he's, I feel like, I mean, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like the sentiment of what he's saying is you are doming from the sub. Right. Right? Is that right? Uh, be- because she's... But yeah, those are words that he could have used. Him, come in, she's... Calling the sh- she's, she's calling say- the session. She's saying yes. Yeah. I see. She's I making see. him do a thing, pro- which you know. is what okay. I thought from episode one. I thought this is what was going to happen, but we never really fully get there. Like we get close to it, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think he could have just said we're doming the sub, not we're topping the bottom. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's weird to use to interchange those words that are so prominent in these three films. <laughs> like, it seems like that's the word that you would go back to, but that's a good question. Here we go. All right, who, all right. What's your question? What's your name? What's your sexy movie? Uh, my name's Jason. Sexy hey, movie. cool dude. <laughs> uh, this guy show gets girls. it. Showgirls. And then, um, so I didn't, I didn't read Wait, the book. Wait, with Nomi Malone? <laughs> Sorry. I didn't Fair read enough. the book, but I read the wiki, and uh, 
Jack was bailed out by Kim Bassinger's ex-husband, who was jealous of the affair that oh. he she had had with Christian, and his revenge was years later when he was in his late twenties. He paid the half million dollars to bail out Jack. Wait, Whoa. this is a pitch or this is Whoa. real? Well, hold on, that's Wait, amazing. So in the book, in the book, in the Fifty book. Shades Freed. The way that Jack Hyde gets out of jail is that Kim Basinger's husband, who is jealous of Kim ba- a- ex-husband, who is jealous that Christian Grey... And this they is had- great. Why is that not in the movie? It should be in the movie. That's a good... It is. Oh, it is? Wait, hold on. How is it? How is it? It's almost... It's like a throwaway line when they show Kim Basinger at the end. Okay. Um, on the newscast, they mention it really briefly. They do? Oh. Yeah. How did I miss wow. this? How did I miss it? I wasn't paying attention to the newscast. <laughs> maybe it was the unrated one. I must have oh, been. Maybe it was the unrated. Oh, yeah. Because is, did you oh, watch a version? Oh, it's only in the unrated. Did you I watch a version where Kim Basinger is in it? Yeah. For like okay. two seconds. Okay, yes. Okay, that is the okay. one that's, that they For cut a minute, her out. I was like, how did I miss this? But, but just to be clear, the unrated version is like, we're going to add a newscast. Yeah. The unrated one is like, it's not like, we will answer a question. It's not like you can see an uncut dick. <laughs> it's just like... Are you ready for your song? Yeah, come on up. You know, you know the drum. By the way, up. those are all great... All great questions and much better sexy, horny movies. Yes, yes. Well, obviously, we had opinions about this movie, but there are people out there with a different opinion. It is now time for Second Opinions. If I was your husband, would you let me pay you by your place of work and fire your boss for being a man? Hey, hey, a really gross man. I take your best friends on vacation, take care of you, let you hang with them for fun when only I can. Hey, hey, when only I can. If I was your husband, could I buy you a dream house? Also buy you a car and a wardrobe for when we go out. Not that you're helpless, but sometimes, sometimes, those are the things that financial control's about. (laughs) Would you let me braid your hair? Can I call you mommy sometimes? Or can we go to the playroom? Or maybe we could just go to a movie and raid it together. Because to me, baby, that would be five stars. Yeah. Amazing. Give it up for Jen. Yes. Great job, Jen. Show it to them. Yes. Give it up for yes. Jen. Yes. That's how it's done. All right. These are five-star reviews from Amazon. Now, here's the interesting thing. First movie, 70,000 reviews. Second movie, 40,000 reviews. Third movie, 20,000 reviews. 86 of these uh, reviews are five-star reviews. 86, sorry, 86%, sorry. 80. So sorry. 86% are five-star reviews. And here we go. We'll start off with KB. KB titles uh, their review, Hot. This movie is just plain sexy. The only part about it is the pregnancy thing. I could have done without that. He's a billionaire. If he wanted kids, he would have had them already. I loved that his reaction to that news was so realistic and what he said was spot on. If I were him, I'd be totally PO'd as well. It ruins the fantasy. Can't we just have one movie about young, beautiful, fabulously wealthy people without it being ruined by children? (laughs) Even Sex in the City wasn't safe. Thanks, Steve and Miranda, but whatever. (laughs) Ah, Miranda. Ah, Miranda. Other than the pregnancy part, yeah. It was lovely. Five stars. <laughs> now, this one by Jan was a little surprising. Jan titled it, Loved It, But We Would Love It So Much More. I loved 
the unrated version. They should have had that version in the theaters. Now, here's the thing I wish they would do as an anniversary for Fifty Shades. I would love for them to have all the deleted scenes added to the unrated versions of the movies. I did a poll, and over 250 people have said they would buy it completed like that. I hate having to see the deleted scenes as extras. If they were just added to the movie, it would flow so much better. Plus, I'm sure there were some scenes that were never even used for deletions that were just extra and put away. So come on, Universal. We would like an uncut, unrated version of the movies with all the deleted scenes that were added to the movie to run straight through them. Five stars. By the way, if they were smart, they would be marketing uncut versions. If they were smart, they would be unrated. Fuck you. Alan T. writes, good love story for love with a certain twist. It was enjoyable to watch. Would recommend you to watch it with a lover. I always hear of women getting charged up big time watching any of these three movies. Ew. I don't like the way you're saying any of this. Charged it's one thing. Up. I don't like that this has been written, but I definitely don't like your interpretation. Five stars. That's chilling. Now, uh, we have been hitting one star reviews as well. And this is the one that I really enjoyed from an Amazon customer. Couldn't even put down their name. First, you had no directions on how to hook this DVD to your cable TV. (laughs) Hey, who is the you in that sentence? I think Amazon. I think Amazon. Amazon. Then... What's shocking is that this is... Oh, wait, go ahead. Sorry, sorry, sorry. First, you had no directions on how to hook this DVD to your cable TV. Then, when I saw on the computer this... In your face movie, all in caps. I just simply put it in the garbage. If someone wants to know about sex, well, there's lots and lots of books. And more tasteful ones, like The Joy of Sex and The Kuma Satra. As a SAG actor. I really deplore this so-called movie. I can't tell you with all the publicity how abhorrent this movie was to me. God, what audacity to make, all in capital, this so-called movie. To me personally, as a SAG actor, (laughs) my standards are high, and it pains me that it's happening in this industry. One star. Uh, I simply put it in the garbage. Oh, my God. A bigger twist than H.R. Liz is that they were a SAG actor. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. And they're shit. trying to connect DVDs to cable players. As a uh, SAG DVD actor, doesn't, DVD I don't doesn't know doesn't fit how to my hook TV. this up. Oh, Holy my God. shit. But I, I do want to have uh, our final opinion before we get into our final opinions given by June Diane Rayfield. Uh, June, who is sick, refused to be on camera. Uh, we did not have a masquerade mask, but, uh, but we do have this clip, and we have a special guest here, too. So let's just see if this will work. You know, the thing that I was most resentful of is the last shot of the third movie. He, she's sitting reading a book, and he walks over with their son, who's like a, a toddler, and then as the camera sort of pans out, you realize she's also very pregnant, their second child. And I'm watching, and I felt so mad because I'm like, I don't care how rich you are. No mom of a, like, 15-month-old boy and pregnant has time to read a book. <laughs> no, I thought you were going to say, then he says, come to my playroom and, like, straps her down onto one of his no. torture devices. Okay. No, I would have preferred that. I found this. That's so the most offensive. offensive. <laughs> Everything else I was He for. puts her in a dog collar. I don't care. I was like, wraps her down. Respectful. Respectful. Portrayal of women. Respectful portrayal of women. Ankles. 
And yet Seeing this her one, with that book, I was like, don't disrespect us. That's <laughs> crazy. What a crazy don't take. I'm so sad that the people won't hear this, this hot take. Don't disrespect us like that. <laughs> so that is June's hot take. With, with Jessica St. Clair. With Jessica St. Clair, who has not seen the movie. And today did ask me sincerely what Riz was. <laughs> and I refused to tell her. Little does she know it's just an internet search away, but... Yeah. One, of the, one of the things that I wrote, which I do wish had come true, um, with, is at a certain point, I think maybe when they were in Aspen or whatever, somehow something unfolded that I said, oh, is this whole movie basic, or this whole series of movies for Anastasia, St- Anastasia St- Steele a the game situation <laughs> is every our, our, like I felt like Jack and Liz from HR and Hannah and everybody were kind of got me and be like ha ha we're all actors we're SAG actors <laughs> this whole thing has been a, a game for you put on by your friend Kate huzzah <laughs> that's the only way this movie makes any sense I got an elaborate graduation present from her absentee mom Ima- <laughs> imagine you are Jack and you realize your assistant's boyfriend is the guy that stole your life? That's fucking bananas. The coincidences in this mo- in this series are absolute well, insanity. I mean, the way that they open up an envelope at the end, he, she's like, oh, what's that envelope? He's like, oh, all this evidence and all the plot. She's like, oh, let me open it up. <laughs> oh, all, this, all the pages we didn't shoot. It's script pages wow. from scenes we didn't shoot. It says here that Jack's going to be okay, but <laughs> they got some evidence on him. Oh, here's a picture. What, wait, hold on. What's that picture? That's me. That's him. Oh, I guess we were in the same foster home. All right, well. Yeah. Uh, and, then, and, and, and then she's like, you can't cook. And he's like, I guess we're going out for dinner. And it's like, dun, dun, dun. Whoop, boom. Like, Give me a fucking break. You don't get to do that, movie. It's so oddly unfulfilling that as he is tossing the pasta that he's made, he's like over his shoulder going, oh, now it all makes sense. (laughs) And then he could keep that envelope closed for so long. If someone passed me an envelope, like, hey, this is the why this person tried to abduct your wife and tried to kill you, I would open that envelope right away. It wouldn't be like an after-dinner envelope, like, I'll crack into that later. <laughs> I didn't I didn't crack into any of the extra scenes, deleted yeah. scenes, any of that. I didn't watch the unrated version. I keep forgetting to. Thank God I didn't. It would have been The longer. deleted scenes, there's a giant scene of um, Rita Ora playing chess on the airplane. Just her, just chess champ. Really? <laughs> Amazing. I think there might have been a deleted scene where they're all having breakfast uh, in Aspen at the table and uh, 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 the brother is like, how come the table smells like rancid milk and... <laughs> And swamp ass. If I walk in to a communal breakfast table and somebody's like, we fucked on this last night. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I don't want that. I don't want fucking ass, fucking sweaty ass on the table where we eat breakfast. Get him out of town. There's a movie called Going the Distance with Justin Long and Drew Barrymore. And they fuck on a table, and then the next day they're eating, like, Thanksgiving on it, and they're all disgusted by it. It's one of my favorite scenes because it's, like, two people know that it's all disgusting, and then, like, turkey legs are falling Ugh. off on it, and they're like, ah. It's like, Ugh. we need a little bit more comedy in no, these. I was, I was very bummed out by this movie. I thought it was going to get sexier. And I nope. just watched it, and I was like, he's, um, he's emotionally abusive. He's financially abusive. He's almost physically abusive. He doesn't show his dick. He's not good at sex. He uses a tiny vibrator. The wedding was ugly. He's not funny. He's not charming. He did give her a publishing job. I liked that. Yes. And, <laughs> and I, at the end of it, I was like, this fucking sucks. And then she goes in for that last montage that you talked about. And, and he is, for the final montage where she goes through their whole relationship, he's doing um, a Pilates pose where it's just his arms holding his whole body up. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yes, this is right. the so second he's, movie, yes. he's like levitating, uses just as his arms, and, sh- and she looks at him and thinks through their entire fucking relationship. All and then he's, se- he's still holding the pose. It's all and I was scenes like, this from is- the movie. Yeah, These all scenes all from the movie. Yeah. Like as, as, as if it's a recap of the trilogy of movies yes. that, that you have loved. As if, yes. No, it's as if that they're, it's like what they did at the end of the Fast movies when, you know, they're yes. kind of sending off their characters. 
okay, yeah. But Don't you? Like, I'm like, R, R. And it felt like they were like, we and that's the, the end. We died. Yeah. <laughs> but I was like, the these, are, are these characters yeah. dead? Yeah, like, are they dead? Yeah. But I can't hear that. <laughs> she- oh, Walker's dead. Pablo's dead. <laughs> Vin. That is sad. Uh, Here it is, she, yeah. she thinks through three movies of her relationship, and he's still holding the pose. Yeah. And I was like, all right. <laughs> That's pretty in hard my to mind, do. In my mind, as she rethinks, uh, as she remembers all of these things, she should be like, oh, wait a minute. I got to get out of here. <laughs> wait. Right. This I've, is a bad relationship. I've here. been tricked. Oh, my God. I'm 20 I, years old. I, I should a, just leave. I am a prisoner. <laughs> what is also funny about this is like oftentimes like montages like this are shown like, to, like, oh, my gosh, look how they've grown. The amount of time has passed. Three weeks have passed. Yeah. They, nothing, like, they're interchangeable scenes because you're like, uh, that scene, movie one. Movie, like, I think they're shooting movie. They're, she, they're showing scenes from this movie yeah. in the montage of their relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's insane is that both um, she and Kate, the college roommates, both graduate, get jobs, and marry billionaire brothers in the course of six weeks. That's that's not- ha- okay, so this movie is for women. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! I think and I, I what think, a fucking mess. I, I think that like there's been a uh, like you know I think that people look at this movie in a in a way that is unfair because they judge it as being like oh it's just like sex and it's this and it's just gross. It's so much more. It's just really terrible movies. Yeah, and I feel like people don't highlight that enough. It's like we don't talk about like no no the. There's choices here that make no sense. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting like just gratuitous sex. Which would have been awesome. I was hoping to be for that. clear, I would have been like, yes, make more of this. Man, I was my nervous. Two, all sex? Yeah. I was nervous to do these because like it's just gonna be us, us talking about sex. Like, no. No, that, it, no it, you're talking about espionage, part. actually. Yes. <laughs> Take me to Pound Town. <laughs> That's what I'm interested in. That's not in this. No. This was three nights where I was like, well, maybe I'll finally go, oh, boy, it's so boring. And each movie gets darker and darker, so you're seeing less and less. That, yeah, and and one of the handcuffs, I just to say, one of the handcuff scenes, he handcuffs her wrist to her ankle, yeah. and then her wrist to her ankle, and it's like, so it's still missionary. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, never not what? missionary. Kim Basinger did a shit job teaching him how to fuck. The she entire, was, like, uh, in the, 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 they, the, the set decorators had such a blast building the Red Room. It is decadent and enormous and has every sex toy in the world. They use like two items and do and just fuck missionary. That's it. There are more interesting things up and displayed, but he's always like, go in the top drawer. Left one. Get the smallest thing out of there. Bring it over to me. It's like in the movie last night, uh, 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 he brings out nipple clamps, okay. but demonstrates them on her finger only. No. That in God. microcosm is what this movie, what this movie series is about sex. Here's the yeah. thing. It's it's outrageous if you think about it, if you've never been exposed to it, but it goes, well, I'll just do it on your finger. It's okay. It's okay. So that's it. We have done it, Jason, Chelsea. We have done all three movies thank you to our audience thank you to our to everybody who's come here all three nights I mean, everyone who's come here yes everyone has come all three people nights. came three nights raise your hands whoa oh man the front rows are really representing we're gonna let you take a picture in a second but chelsea tell everybody about your book so we can make our oh, uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't have a picture of it sorry i'm, I'm queuing up something else all but, looking at the screen sorry. like let's go <laughs> But yeah. um, yes, would love to tell you about my book. If you like crazy sex scenes, read a different book. Yeah. My, not in mine. <laughs> and my book, I date a magician who was an improviser. Uh. Um, <laughs> yes. Wait, 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 Yikes wait. Now, me. one of those things is not cool and one is cool? <laughs> yeah. What about an over yeah. 50-year-old <laughs> improviser? <laughs> Okay, back in business. No, middle I, I, aged man still. Middle yes, aged and. man. Middle aged. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I wrote a, I wrote a comedy gal memoir, and um, that also has some sad parts in it. And if you like stuff like that, get my book. It's called I Shouldn't Be Telling You This. And I I just want to clarify. Um, um, if you sell five hundred books, 
they would be like, that's a good book. And just to remind you, she sold 200,000. Yeah, 200,000. <laughs> Can I that ask is, you That is like, yeah, that's Harry Potter level. Chelsea, For a political your- thriller <laughs> parodying Dante's Week one. Inferno. Week one. Yeah. Is your book out now? My book is not out now. Thank so you, Kate. Okay. Pre-order yeah. the book. Pre-order that matters. my book. If you pre-order my in the but, name of not seeing Jamie Dornan's dick, pre-order my book, give money then, to women and authors. Paul's book. And my book has a picture of Jamie Dornan's dick. So you put it together, or there's like both pictures. You have to put both books together like Voltron, and you finally see his full dick and balls. <laughs> but as you leave tonight. And you're waiting for your car to come, or you're at the bar afterwards. Fire up Amazon, or go it's to so a, an independent bookseller of your Barnes choice. Barnes and Noble. Anything, pre-order yeah. both of these books because pre-orders mean so much. So much. Yeah. It's so crazy. And you have a podcast called Glamorous Trash, right? Yeah, where we read celebrity memoirs. We talk pop culture. We, we just did Barbara Streisand's, which is you know it's a 900 page book. My favorite part of her book, and this is going to be a little spoiler alert for you, is in the beginning, she's like, I met Warren Beatty when I was 16, and he was a nice guy, nothing happened. Page 900, that is 48 hours later. I guess I did fuck Warren Beatty. (laughs) Oh, okay. And, And she spends a lot of the time in the beginning going, all these men make up all these stories that I fucked them. I didn't fuck any of them. I remember everybody that I fucked. Yes! <laughs> I did fuck him. Yes. It's yes. as if, like, it's as if the 48 hour record, she was like, wait a second. Yeah. It's almost like she just got so tired recording the audiobook that she just was like, uh, just saying truths. She's like, whatever. And the editor who was like, she said no, and then she said yes, went, yeah, leave it in. <laughs> Leave it in. To Prince. To Prince. Uh, anyways, so if you want to hear us talk about that for an hour and a half, we'll give you all the highlights. I and cannot like wait. That. It's so good. All oh. right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming out. What a great week. What a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back here. And you can catch Jason and I next month here at Dinosaur, uh, February 23rd. Thank you so much. Bye. Good night. What a show. Thank you so much to Chelsea Devantes for helping us close out our 50 Shades of Grey trilogy. And a huge thank you, as always, to the wonderful staff at Largo. I am talking about Alec up in the booth, Michael Griffey Flanny, and everyone else who makes our shows run so damn smooth. Now, if you want to feel like you are a part of the live audience at the 50 Shades Freed live show, well, you can buy yourself a shirt. It's the same shirt we we designed for the other two episodes. It's Christian Grey's nonsensical company. The shirt says Grey Enterprises, colon, business, telecommunications, independent publishing, blow-dry bars, and charity. And you can buy this shirt and more at tpublic.com slash stores slash HDTGM. If you have a correction and omission for this episode, please leave a message on our Discord at discord.gg slash HDTGM or leave me a voicemail at 619-PAUL-ASK or leave me and Jason a voicemail and ask us for help at that same number. Then make sure you tune in next week to our Last Looks follow-up episode for 50 Shades Free to hear me respond to your messages and we'll also be going back to talk about ronald the barbarian so you still have time to submit your ronald comments as well people a month away from my book release that's right chelsea and i back-to-back books i'm coming out in may she's coming out in june but here's the best part you can pre order them now. Head to my website. You'll see where I'm touring. Dinosaur is going to be in Chicago. We're also going to be in Seattle. We're also going to be in Portland. I'm also going to be back in Chicago doing a book thing. I'm going to be in New York doing a book thing. I'm going to be in Canada and Toronto doing a book thing. I have so much book stuff coming, but don't let that stop you from buying the book. Buy the book now. Go at any retailer at all. Local, big box, online, whatever you do. And make sure you sign up for exclusive access to my pre-order area of my website where you see videos and pictures that no one else will see. People, that's all I got. Remember, you can find us everywhere at HDTGM or visit us at HDTGM.com. If you love the show, tell your friends to listen to it too. Seriously, honestly, word of mouth is the best mover of this pod. And you know what? It's a lot more fun arguing about bad movies with a buddy. And last but not least, I got to say thank you to all your listeners who support this show every week and our entire team who this show couldn't be done without. I'm talking about our producers, Scott Sonny, Molly Reynolds, our movie picking producer, Avril Halley, our engineers, Casey Holford and Rich Garcia, and our associate producer, Jess Cisneros. That's all I got, people. We will see you next week. Until then, bye for now.